Hi, I'm Jeff Yarger. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics. And this video is going to give a brief introduction to an important concept uh, that, that's useful in both physical uh, and chemical natures of thermodynamics uh, that we teach at, at introductory and even is important at more advanced levels, uh, which is the idea of whether a certain property is intensive or extensive in nature. And so we're just going to look at this briefly because of its importance in understanding this uh, for use in uh, chemical and biochemical thermodynamics. So, and I give uh, a website, uh, biopchem.education, uh, which stands for Biological Physical uh, Chemistry, uh, where uh, more information on this topic and others in uh, thermodynamics as well as other uh, uh, physical chemistry topics can be found. So, intensive versus extensive properties often has to do with as we look at as we scale um, materials up and down, you know, does a specific property change or not? So the way I often like to think about this is, is if I have something and I double it, does the property I'm interested in double or change uh, just like, um, you know, the, the substance itself did? So for example, if I have something uh, say, you know, a block of glass and I double it, does the color change? Does the temperature? So if I have, say, a block at 25 degrees and I, I made two of them, now is it, you know, at double the temperature? No, it typically is at the same temperature. That's an intensive property of the system. Um, while obviously if I double the system, I have doubled the size or the volume uh, or for example, the weight of it, the mass of it, uh, et cetera. So these are extensive properties, uh, meaning they scale uh, with um, the system itself. And so just to look at that in some detail, um, there's kind of two classical ways to think of this. One is just that if we think of a box of material and we kind of uh, scale that box up by this factor lambda, does the property that we're interested in scale as well with that. And the extensive property here would be, if it's homogeneous, would be this beta would be equal to one and it would scale with lambda. And we can write a whole um, you know, mathematics behind that. And, and I'm not gonna uh, do that here except to say, I would encourage you to look at some of the mathematics of this and being able to you know, scale by these factors. The other way is, is, like I said, to think about this just kind of in conceptual terms as well. So, you know, for example, we have, you know, one bunny rabbit and now we make two of those uh, bunny rabbits. So, you know, for example, if we had the volume, then we would say the volume doubled. It volume from one of them to two identical ones, we have twice the volume. And this is very important to look at when we look at uh, thermodynamic parameters. And so let's start the one that we define thermodynamics by, which is the energy. The first law is a conservation of energy. The second law is telling us the form of energy that heat has as far as, far as entropy, et cetera. So when we double the system, we double its energy. And we double it in different, it's all its forms of energy as well. So not only its internal energy, but if we change to different dependent variables for that energy, for example, it's enthalpy or Gibbs free energy or Helmholtz free energy, which we often write A now, um, those scale as well. In other words, they would double as well. As well as other things like what we define in the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy scales as well, so that the entropy would double. But there are other parameters, like for example, the temperature, if this uh, bunny was at 25 degrees and we made two of them, we wouldn't say that now that new system with two uh, rabbits is, is now at twice the temperature, it's at the same temperature. Um, and assuming it scales in all directions, we would say it's homogeneous. 
we would say the same about the pressure, the chemical potential, the density of the system. And it's really when we get to density that we see another important property here, which is oftentimes if we take, when we take two extensive parameters and divide one by the other, we get an intensive parameter. So what is the density of the system, which we often represent rho? It's, it's mass, which is extensive. If we double the number, we've doubled the mass. Over the volume, if we have one uh, rabbit at one volume, well now we have two, that doubled as well. So these are both extensive parameters. When you divide one extensive by the other, you get an intensive parameter, the density. The density of one rabbit, whether you have two of them, assuming that they're both still the same and homogeneous, you've reproduced them, then it has still the same density. And it, we often do this. We often, in chemistry, biochemistry, or, or uh, scientific physics um, topics as well, we often change these extensive parameters that scale with the size of the system to an intensive parameter. And we do this in typically one of two ways. One is to make it a specific property now, or in a sense to divide uh, through or to scale everything by the mass of the system. So you'll see if we had a volume of something, we can have a specific volume where we now just divide through um, by the mass in kilograms of the system. So we had volume, in common units, for example, in liters or meters cubed, um, it's extensive. Uh, we have uh, the mass of it in kilograms, that's extensive. If we uh, divide the volume by the mass, now we get an intensive parameter, the specific volume. Also that's common in chemistry is not to use a mass of something, where it, but it's to use the number of moles of something. And so instead of a specific volume, we would call that the molar volume. So all of these specific parameters, whether it be the specific volume or energy or entropy, et cetera, can be a molar entropy, a molar volume, a molar enthalpy, um, et cetera. And that uh, is also a very common way. And what we typically do when we go from these extensive parameters to either a specific intensive parameter or a molar intensive parameter is to either is to use a lowercase um, uh, symbol of the same uh, type. So for volume where you use a capital V, we would use a lowercase. Or another common way is to use um, a bar over it. So, uh, to do a molar volume like that, to use the internal energy with a bar over it, to use S with a bar over it, etc. Um, so uh, nomenclature can vary across those, and these are probably the two of the most common. And if you think about it, this is very common. When you look up tables, for example, most common thermodynamic things you would look up are like the energy, usually as an enthalpy. It's rarely given in its absolute enthalpy in joules or kilojoules, it's usually given as you know kilojoules per mole. Um, and so oftentimes, um, one of the more confusing thing about intensive and extensive parameters when we're looking specifically at thermodynamics is, is that we think of the enthalpy as being extensive, and it is, when we look at it in purely its energy terms in kilojoules. But oftentimes it'll just say the enthalpy and what it really means is the specific enthalpy or more likely the molar enthalpy. And you can always tell this by the units where you have the units of energy, which is extensive, and the units in the number of moles, which is the number of moles is extensive as well. Or in this case also, or, or over the mass in something like um, uh, kilograms. So hopefully this gives you a general introduction to this important concept and how we distinguish different types of variables in chemistry and biochemistry through being either extensive or intensive in nature and how to take extensive parameters um, and make them intensive in a way that we often do so that it doesn't scale with the size of the system 
um, we're talking about, that we do this in a specific uh, way or a molar uh, way. Thank you.